A very good evening. I'm Aditya Lama and this is the Tuesday night edition of Vision of Asia, our daily South Asian news segment. We bring you tonight diverse platforms representing interests and needs of our community while also reflecting upon the growing strength of U.S.-India trade and development dialogue and its impact on Indian Americans. We hope to bring forth some truly empowered, engaged and enable attributes of the community, pushing for a bigger voice, advocacy, commitment and much more both politically and socially. So do remember to reach us on events at itvgo.com. Also a quick shout out now, this week celebrates the 50th anniversary of the first human landing on the moon when Apollo 11 rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida and later the spacecraft touched down onto the moon with Neil Armstrong taking his famous giant leap for mankind waving the flag of United States of America called one of humanity's most glorified technological achievements. On that note, in the spirit of changing contributions, let's now begin our South Asian segment for tonight, taking a look at the headlines. New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy announces September trade mission to India, AICC South Plain Field. SALT denounces ice rate and family separation, featuring Lakshmi Sridhar's Skype interview. Vartal Dham Shri Swami Narayan Mandir hosts 15th Patotsav and Nishta Mahotsav in New Jersey. A lot on the other side of a short break. Stay tuned with us on Vision of Asia. Voice of the community will be right back. Welcome back. I'm Aditi Lama and this is Vision of Asia, South Asian news segment, Tuesday edition. Starting the show tonight on a note of U.S.-India economic relations, New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy announced a major trade mission trip to India at a luncheon recently organized by the Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce in South Plainfield. The seven-day trade mission to India this coming September is aimed at strengthening the ties with New Jersey State's second largest foreign direct investor, India, with cities including Delhi, Agra, Hyderabad, Mumbai, Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar. The announcement reflects upon the fourth largest Indian community in this country which resides in the state of New Jersey and the governor and his delegation hope to cultivate deeper international investment opportunities and a cultural dialogue. Showcasing his excitement as being the first governor of New Jersey to visit India on an official business trip, Governor Phil Murphy spoke heavily on India's role in global economy and creating long-lasting partnerships. Plans for the trip include meeting with key Indian government and industry leaders as well as visits to several companies. Let's take a look at highlights from the announcement and also comments from members of the Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce representing New Jersey's Asian Indian business community and its interests. And I thank each and every one of you not only for your membership in but your participation with the Chamber, but also for your commitment to growing your business here in New Jersey. Uh, again, I want to give a couple of quick shout outs to some very distinguished guests. Assemblywoman Nancy Pinkett again is with us. Assemblywoman Ralph Karabinchak is with us. The governor just spoke about all of the economic development and his trip to India, where he's going to six different cities. We're talking to the elected officials, business members, looking to bring back businesses back to New Jersey. I think this is an absolute excellent, excellent trip. As you know, uh, and as Pritchard just uh, be began to, to um, enunciate, New Jersey is home to the nation's fourth largest Indian American community in terms of raw numbers. Roughly 310,000 Indian Americans were counted in New Jersey in the last census, but the latest estimates from the Census Bureau put that number today at more than 420,000. That's one of the fastest growing one of the fastest growing communities in our state. And on a separate note, I'm looking forward to our administration's partnership with all of our varied communities, including Indian Americans, to ensure a full and accurate count in next year's census. I am fully committed to the work of the New Jersey Complete Count Commission in this effort. Numbers, numbers are power, and we know that when the full diversity of New Jersey is counted, it will show us to be an even more powerful voice for inclusion, respect, 
and preserving our proud heritage as a nation of immigrants. We're very happy to hear the governor's announcement that he'll be going on a trade mission to India in September. It's a very big development. This is the 25th year of the Asian Indian Chamber, so it's very, it, it's late in coming, but the first governor who's ever gone to India on a trade mission. This means that right here in New Jersey, more than anywhere else across the entirety of the United States, Indian culture and heritage is felt more and has a greater impact. And as you know, the businesses you own have a tremendous impact on the economic life of this state. Professional and financial services, hospitality and travel, retail, physicians and pharmacists, every sector of our economy. You create jobs, you support community investment and growth. The heartbeat of New Jersey's economy is our small business community, a community which increasingly reflects our growing diversity. Immigrants in New Jersey comprise over 30% of business owners and 47% of Main Street business owners. India is New Jersey's fourth largest overall trade partner. This is an economic relationship that exceeds $8.3 billion annually. It is a relationship, importantly, that continues to grow. And as we work to reclaim our leadership in the innovation economy, India will continue to be an essential partner. After all, India is the second leading source of foreign direct investment in New Jersey. And we were so honored to have our Governor Phil Murphy here to talk about and announce his trade mission that he's going to be having in India in September. So again, I want to thank everyone, all the media, all the board members, and the members of the Asian Indian Chamber of Commerce for coming out tonight uh, and welcoming the Governor. Thank you so much. Thank you, ITV Gold. First. We have our long-established leadership as the home of innovation. You've heard me say this before, uh, likely, but we were Silicon Valley before there was a Silicon Valley. Our century-long dominance in the pharmaceutical and life sciences sector gave us the nickname of the medicine chest to the world. Our location, secondly, our location, home to the nation's second busiest shipping ports, bookended by growing international airports, next door to the world's largest market and biggest capital market, and serviced by all means of transportation infrastructure. Our location is literally second to none. And of course, we have our people. Strong, smart, creative, diverse. A people who understand that embracing our diversity is key to our future. This is the story we have to not only tell, but to shout from the rooftops. It's the story that says that across the entire country, there is no better place for innovation and innovative businesses than New Jersey. And it's the story that I will proudly take with me this September when I'll be the first governor in New Jersey history to visit India on official business while in office when I embark on my second international economic mission, a week-long six-city trip. The trip... We are so pleased that the launch was announced here at the AICC luncheon and we were filled with um, state representative councilman Kapil Bai Shah and uh, we had the governor, we had the governor's team and we had two assembly people here so it was a wonderful event. I am incredibly excited to make this trip. I am excited by the possibilities. I'm excited by the chance to see the tremendous culture of India up close and by the way this is a coming home trip for me. Uh, I haven't been to India in 20 years. Uh, both Tammy and I have been there. I used to go there regularly on business. I'm incredibly excited to get back. And make no doubt, I'm excited about being able to tell you all about it upon my return. We grow when we work together. We grow when we invite others to join us. This mindset is what grew New Jersey into an economic power, and it is the mindset that will reignite our global economic leadership yet again. And you are all a part of this growth. And that's we really appreciate the governor to choose AICC. And he promised after the India visit, he come back again and tell us what is the experience. So we are really thanks to governor to choose AICC for his kickoff party. Thank you. This afternoon, Governor Murphy announced his trade mission to India, and we he ex announces all his exciting plans. So we are looking forward to all this and also the debriefing that he will provide once he is back. We started this journey 25 years ago, 
as a, um, as something that we wanted to do for the Asian Indian community. Um, and it's so nice that uh, is, uh, we have young generation pole bearers who are taking it to the, to the uh, right level of uh, business uh, expansion and recognition. Thank you so much. We now have religious glimpses coming in from popular Vartal Dham Sri Swami Narayan Mandir in New Jersey, which recently hosted its 15th Patotsav and Nishta Mahotsav in Somerset, New Jersey. Graced by Acharya Sri Rakesh Prasad Maharaj, the religious events saw young members of the temple depict various aspects of the Hindu dharma, morals and teachings learned at the Patotsav and Nishta Mahotsav. The traditional dances, recitations, prayer enactments and much more, the religious event also saw Katha, Yagna, Abhishek, Anakut, culture program, educational religious discourses and much more. Many spoke on the importance of imbibing Swami Narayan Bhagwan's principles and values for the Hindu Dharma also focused on an increase in spiritual development through satsang and seva. Let's take a look at some highlights. <laughs> वर्ताल के भक्त लोग अमेरिका की धरती पर रहते हुए भी सत्संग का बहुत लाभ ले रहे हैं उनके जीवन में सत्संग के बहुत अच्छे अच्छे गुण भी आ रहे हैं और इस उपलक्ष में हमारे साथ बहुत सारे संतों ने भी लाभ लिया है हमारे रामदास जी स्वामी इस सत्संग का बहुत अच्छा कार्य कर रहे हैं तो अतः तो इस उत्सव के उपलक्ष में इस टी के माध्यम से देख रहे सभी दर्शकों को हमारा भाव से जय स्वामीनारायण खास करके भक्त लोग आपसे हमारी यही एक गुजारिश है स्वामीनारायण भगवान ने हमेशा अपने भक्तों को ये उपदेश दिया है कि जीवन बहुत अल्प है बुद्धि भी हमारी बहुत अल्प है अतः इंसान को हमेशा निर्माणी होकर कहने का मतलब डाउन टू अर्थ होकर रहना चाहिए तो अतः इस माध्यम से जो देख रहे हैं दर्शक लोग उनको भी मैं यही कहना चाहता हूँ कि स्वामीनारायण भगवान की कृपा आप सब पर बनी रहें आप सभी लोगों का जीवन निर्माणी हो माता पिता की सेवा करें ईश्वर ने कुछ शक्ति और सामर्थ्य दी हो तो रोगी मनुष्य आदि की सेवा करें और हमारे हिंदुस्तान के जो भी धर्म प्रचारक यहाँ आते हैं उन सब की सेवा कीजिए यही खास मेरे आप सब भक्तों को भलामण है भगवान स्वामीनारायण सारे यूएसए से हमारी इंटरनेशनल स्वामीनारायण संस्थान ऑफ वड़ताल की शिविर भी थी यहाँ तो तीन दिन की शिविर थी वड़ताल से पंद्रह बीस संत एंड आचार्य महाराज श्री राकेश प्रसाद जी महाराज शिविर में आए थे और बहुत अच्छी तरह से शिविर का आज पूर्ण होते हुई बड़ा उत्सव हो रहा है अभिषेक हो रहा है अनुकूट होगा और सबसे ज़्यादा पंद्रह बरस का सेलिब्रेशन होगा जो स्वामीनारायण संप्रदाय है उसमें भगवान स्वामीनारायण ने मंदिर 
वड़ताल गढ़ा जूनागढ़ अमदावाद भूज धौलेरा जो आचार्य श्री संतों को भी मंत्र दीक्षा दे करके संत बनाते हैं और गृहस्थ को भी भगवान स्वामीनारायण के सत्संगी बनाते हैं ऐसी प्रवृत्ति से ही वो अपने जीव का कल्याण कर सकता है अमेरिका की धरती पर न्यू जर्सी में न्यू ब्रिंसविक में नज़दीक में ये आया अपना एम रोड पर आया हुआ है स्वामीनारायण मंदिर यहाँ से बहुत सारे लोग भगवान के भक्त बने हैं बनेंगे और बनते जा रहे हैं हजारों लोगों का इस मंदिर के द्वारा मोक्ष होगा ऐसी मैं परमेश्वर के चरणों में प्रार्थना करता हूँ जय स्वामीनारायण Time for the show break but stay with us in Vision of Asia we'll be right back Welcome back you are watching Vision of Asia bringing you prime south asian highlights from all across We now have an exclusive story coming in on our continuous efforts in presenting real stories and nationwide advocacies and groups that empower south asian minority voices especially in politics one of the biggest stories catching the eye of every immigrant currently are the nationwide ice raids which launched this weekend under the direction of president Donald Trump with much circling around the status of illegal immigrants in the US and the constant struggle visible in US politics this news of increased ice activity also is impacting south asians and other communities of colors with many sentiments of fear being discussed pertaining to these immigrants salt south asian americans leading together national non-profit advocacy and a leader in south asian racial and immigrant rights and voices has denounced ice raids and family separation stating that this destabilizes communities and harms children salt's interim co-executive director lakshmi shridhan recently spoke to us via skype detailing these raids Trump administration immigration policies and also resources for all impacted as well as a call to south asians to mobilize and advocate let's take a look my question to you would be what do these cities which have such a high concentration of a diverse community really represent when these are the ones being targeted by ice what sort of sentiments do you think are being presented through this massive raid according to you Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think this administration is finding as many ways as possible to deport as many individuals as possible. Just yesterday there was um the executive order issued um by the president um on the census uh and you know, even though the citizenship question was really legally, you know, had no grounds and that was uh reinforced by the Supreme Court, right. um you know, he is still finding a way to get that data to be able to target and deport people. And so we see this as one of many tactics. Um uh to increase the number of people that this administration is able to deport and really uh you know the the foundation for all of this is um their ability to really criminalize um migrant communities and that's what we're seeing and that's what these raids are part of um and they of course are creating both a chilling effect and a lot of fear in communities um mm -hmm. and very legitimate fear because we have seen the mass deportations of so many people You know just uh talking about these raids I kind of wanted to bring attention to this press release that Salt had released very recently stating that ICE raids announcement comes on the heels of new reports of deaths and overcrowding in detention facilities denials of beds and sanitation for detained children and continued unwillingness by ICE to reunify the families so the big issue here that we're discussing is separation of families mistreatment to these children and also not knowing what is happening to these undocumented immigrants who've been living here for so many years i would love love for you to sort of reflect on that it was a very strong statement released 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, the target of the raids that are happening this weekend are not just um, people that have final orders of removal, but right. the targets have been expanded to unaccompanied children that have aged out, so essentially turned 18 or older. Um, and so we're seeing, you know, this is, like you said, related to the conditions that people are also facing in detention. I mean, the, the raids are intended to be able to detain and eventually deport as many people as possible, right. uh, but this is much connected to the conditions that um, that people who are undocumented or seeking asylum or refugees are facing while they're prolonged, um, prolonged, you know, facing detention and um, for very long periods of time. Um, and so that's another issue that we work very much on, which is uh, conditions in detention. So you're seeing people who, and these are South Asians who are in detention right. in facilities in Paso, uh, in California, in San Diego, and all across the border um, that are facing medical neglect, um, torture and retaliation by ICE officials, by being thrown into solitary confinement, um, you know, not being provided the language assistance that they are supposed to be guaranteed by law um, in order to understand their rights, um, and not being given religious accommodations um, for, what, for what they require. And so these are the range of conditions that we're seeing in detention and that we've repeatedly raised um, with this administration and really have, you know, gotten nowhere. And they are unwilling uh, to address them, and they get away with it every single time. But then what happens when they add in more of these undocumented immigrants that they want to catch during these raids. What will happen to these community members is my question. And also, you know, just talking about these conditions of immigrants and that have been detained, why is nothing being done to help their situations? We're seeing so many, you know, influential personalities visiting detention centers, advocating mm -hmm. really highly about things. However, the action has to come from the government. What is your take on that? Absolutely. I mean, we um, every time we issue a complaint about a facility, uh, we also uh, follow up with members of Congress that we know are representing those areas where the detention facilities are. And like you said, they have sent delegations um, to these uh, detention facilities to tour them. And often what happens is when members of Congress go, um, ICE will sort of clean up and um, the facility and, and, you know, mask whatever um, abuses that they're conducting in the facility to present a different kind of image um, of what's actually going on. Right. And I, it's, it's really bad because ICE has, um, at this point, um, you know, they they just don't even they don't even care if members of Congress actually see the abuses that are occurring in the facilities, and they and because they know that there's no recourse. And we've had um, Senator Harris put in congressional inquiries in California. We've had Representative Escobar and Representative Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, who was down there recently. Right. Um, and even despite all of that, they are not being held accountable for how they're treating migrants in these facilities. But as the SALT press release also stated, this is clearly a violation of certain sanctuary policies that some of these cities already have. What is right. your take on them being targeted during these raids? How does that sort of impact it and how should that be targeted now, even through SALT, when these policies are being totally not being followed? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Many of these cities are sanctuary cities, and I think in some ways that's the reason they are being targeted, because this administration has been going after sanctuary cities for so long, trying to withhold community block grant development programs and other really critical funding from cities that declare themselves sanctuary cities. And so, um, you know, I think it, it, there have been here in Montgomery County, Maryland, in Washington, D.C., um, government officials have issued statements saying that they will not be cooperating with ICE, and I think it's really important um, that the cities who all have declared themselves sanctuary cities are getting know your rights information out to people and also making sure that local law enforcement is not collaborating with immigration enforcement. And, you know, it gets really tricky because um, one of the issues that we've been facing and working with our allies here in Congress is to right. make sure that the public can really understand the distinction between local law enforcement and immigration enforcement. Um, because a lot of times um, ICE and other immigration enforcement officials will very much blur the lines deliberately to appear as local law enforcement officials. Um, and, and so people feel more intimidated and um, feel the need to have to communicate with them um, and be arrested. And so that's something that we're also trying to work on is to make sure that those lines are very clear. And that is all for the show tonight. Remember to send us your suggestions and get your voices and organizations on our show. Remember to email us on events at itvgold.com or follow us on Facebook at ITVGold. You can also now subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch many of our popular shows for free. 
Thank you for joining us tonight. This is Vision of Asia and I'm Aditi Lamba. Take care and be well.